The NFL Draft is upon us. Here are my top 10 2024 rookie quarterbacks according to the success that they'll have at the NFL level. You got number 10, Austin Reed from Western Kentucky. Austin Reed is this year's Tyler Badgett, except he already made the leap from Division II Western Florida to Western Kentucky without missing a beat. The dude threw for 8,000 yards over the last two seasons, and it makes you wonder if he can make another big leap to having success in the NFL. Because Reed is 24 years old, but a lot of guys are past the typical 21, 22 years old when they come in the draft because of the COVID eligibility year. Over his history, Reed has been physically durable. Dude has a nice deep ball and could see a long career as a dependable backup. And I see his ceiling being somewhere along the lines of Cooper Rush. Number nine, Michael Pratt from Tulane. Because Michael Pratt was a four-year starter at Tulane. Positive sign. And that led them on to their two best seasons ever in 2022 and 2023. He even beat the number one overall pick. Caleb Williams head to head in the Cotton Bowl, although he did only complete eight passes in that one. Now, Pratt is a smart player and a proven winner, and he made Willie Fritz a lot of money when he left Tulane. And he'll always be a legend in New Orleans, and maybe the Saints take advantage of that, and maybe he helps sell some tickets, but I don't see him in the NFL in a consistent starting role unless something goes very wrong in front of him, which then he'll have a different chance. Number eight, mm, I know that this is going to make some people mad, but J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. I'm out here on record saying I don't get it. And now the young kids, they call it standing on business. Now, Michigan Twitter will say, I'm just a hater. Whatever, man. I've been wrong before, and I might be wrong again, but at least let me explain how I got here. Because when Josh Allen came into the NFL, I had serious doubts that the things that flashed at Wyoming could be harnessed to make him a consistent star at the position. But the Bills, they pulled it off. But there's a big difference between harnessing someone's talents and unlocking them all together. Because all we keep hearing about J.J. McCarthy is, is that he did what was asked of him. That's why he only had one 300-yard pass a game last year and averaged less than one touchdown pass over Michigan's last seven games. Okay, so here's the truth about J.J. McCarthy. He was just doing what he was asked to do. But if he is coming in as a top five or top 15 pick people are going to expect him to start and that's too heavy of a burden for him he's a guy who needs to sit develop but the likelihood of him getting that opportunity is very low which is why he's lower on this list number seven jordan travis out of florida state i hate that nobody's talking about jordan travis Poorly timed injuries will do that to you, though. And Jordan Travis started out his college career thinking of himself as an athlete that can play quarterback. But by the end of it, he stopped relying on his legs and started showing that he had mastered the position from a decision-making standpoint. And he was the heart and soul of that Florida State team that deserved to be in the college football playoff last year. But that's a whole nother discussion. And last year, we watched Jordan Travis outduel Jaden Daniels, the Heisman winner, number two overall pick, or three, likely, and Riley Leonard over at Duke, and absolutely go off in back-to-back -back road games at Wake Forest and Pitt. And his three total touchdowns in Death Valley marked Florida State's first win at Clemson in 10 years. Jordan Travis is a winner. And I could see him stringing together some solid seasons as an NFL starter. Number six. Spencer Rattler. I don't think we've seen what Spencer Rattler is truly capable of yet. And I'm not sure we even saw him in an offense that suited for him. He wasn't going to run around like your typical Lincoln Riley protege. And at South Carolina, they had him holding on to the ball for ages, looking to hit the home run. Still, when you look at his raw numbers, you'd swear that 11,000 yards, 77 touchdowns in almost four years of starting in the Big 12 and SEC with the Red River rivalry victory as a redshirt freshman and multiple wins over top 10 teams as a junior. 
that his college career wasn't largely unsatisfying, but honestly, it could have been much better. And hopefully the NFL gives him the opportunity to prove his five-star status coming out of high school and allows him to make quick decisions and process complex offenses with tons of different options because I think this kid could be special. Number five, Drake May. Drake May is who the New York Giants hoped they would turn Daniel Jones into. Dude is big, athletic, throws a fantastic ball, and managed to keep the expectations of being a top pick all year long at North Carolina without fumbling the bag. Now, the thing about North Carolina's offense that I've been told by people who would know is that you can force the quarterback to run, and ACC teams did that to Howell back in 2021, and they tried to do it to May in 23, and May responded with five games over 50 yards rushing, and at 6'5", that ain't easy to do. I do believe that Drake May has every physical tool that it takes to have success in the NFL. But the one thing that he hasn't really shown is a dominant star performance against a top tier defense. Now that's an unknown element that will be encouraging for some general managers and scary for others. Number four, Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. But George, Michael Penix has a history of injuries. We're not factoring that in, remember? But George, Michael Penix is a deep ball merchant in a league that has moved to coverages to take away the deep ball. That's a bit of a myth because Penix completed 170 short passes last year at a 73% completion rate. But George, Michael Penix isn't an athlete. Running a 4-5 in the 40 isn't athletic. Did you even watch him at Indiana? He's definitely an athlete. But George's footwork stinks when he gets knocked off his platform and spray chart goes all over the place. You're telling me that there's no room for improvement? The dude can play at a minimum. He's comparable to Ryan Fitzpatrick. But his ceiling? We might have another Tua Tagovailoa on our hands. Number three, Jaden Daniels from LSU. See, this is a tough one. Is Jaden Daniels the guy we saw the first four years of his college career or the Jaden Daniels that won the Heisman Trophy last year? Because here's what I do know. Concerns about his size are unfounded. He's 23, over 200 pounds, and anybody that has seen the highlight reels of him getting blown up by defenders knows that this is the toughest quarterback in this draft class. He has the perfect demeanor to play quarterback in the NFL. He's not going to get rattled by losses or locker room drama or turnovers or big moments in the fourth quarter. Mentally, the kid is elite when it comes to handling pressure. Where I get concerned is his desire to take off running after one or two reads. He finally started trusting himself enough to throw into coverage last year. Thanks in part to the wide receivers, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas as well, and their ability to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. I don't think anybody will ever regret drafting Jaden Daniels, nor will they regret making him the face of their franchise. But unless he proves he can master an offense, he might not be able to carry a team like a Mahomes or C.J. Shroud camp. Number two, Bo Nix out of Oregon. Oh, here comes the homer talk. Come on. Come on. But before you call me a homer, this dude won me over. You can check my Twitter timeline. I was never, not one single day, in the Bo Nix camp when he was at Auburn. But I've had a front row seat for his skill set, mentality, and performance over the last two years. And I think his game translates perfectly to the NFL. The biggest criticism of Nix has been that he dinks and dunks and he's a check down merchant to get to his big stats. Okay, cool. The last two years, Mahomes has thrown a total of two touchdowns, which traveled over 20 yards in the air. The name of the modern game is to get your receivers and running backs the ball and let them cook. And there's not a quarterback in this draft class that is better at that than Bo Nix. He's athletic enough to move in the pocket, and he's proven to be one of the best college quarterbacks ever at protecting himself from the pass rush. His combine showed he has one of the best deep balls, one of the highest velocity passes, and some of the largest hands of any quarterback in the class. And he might look small, but he's the same height as J.J. McCarthy. Bo Nix is everything that you guys told me that J.J. McCarthy could have been 
if Jim Harbaugh and Sharon Moore had just allowed him to not just protect seven point leads against teams like Penn State. Number one, Caleb Williams. Honestly, I have too many concerns to count about Caleb Williams. However, he is the best quarterback when it comes to tools in his bag that we might have seen coming out since Andrew Luck. And I said I wasn't going to factor into things like destination into this evaluation, but we know Caleb Williams is going to Chicago. That's about 50 red flags all by itself right there. But their general manager, Ryan Pace, is doing a good job. But there's nobody that can avoid the pass rush in this draft like Caleb Williams. There's nobody that can improvise like him. And there's nobody that can fire a missile over the middle down the sideline like Caleb. And while Jaden Daniels is an electric runner, Caleb Williams has that skill set too. He's just more patient with it and taking off. Now, it would make sense to me that 10 years from now, we're looking back on Caleb Williams as the most successful pro quarterback out of the 2024 class. But it also would make sense if that success came somewhere other than Chicago. No disrespect to Bears fans, but forever is a long time when you have not had a top 10 passer. Even Jay Cutler only had one season in Chicago in the top 20 in passing yards. Now, Caleb Williams might be someone's savior, but he'd have to be an all-timer to be a savior of the Bears. And maybe he is. We'll have to wait and see.